Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and this is yet another new indie brand that I am trying. Oh, this time, Britalliano. Mm -hmm. It's a company called We Makeup. They've been in existence for over 50 years, so they are older than me. Get in. And uh, I may have just picked my own palette and a lipstick. So if you want to find out exactly what my personalised palette looks like, and how well or otherwise it performed then my friends you you are in precisely the right place as I have said for some considerable time now and oft here echoed elsewhere by those with less imagination although they don't have a sloth straw when they say it Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I will have shown you this, no doubt, in the intro. Um, it's another new indie brand. I know, I've, I've fallen over quite a few of them recently. Um, this one is not British though, this is Italian. Italiano. Um, and similar to uh, Lethal Cosmetics, which is a German indie brand, which I've got here. That's the palette that I put together from Lethal Cosmetics. You buy the palette and then you buy your individual shades and you put them in in whatever order and whatever configuration you want. Which is awesome because then you don't get left with shades that you're not going to use. Um, loved that idea and I was scrolling during one of my Painsomnia moments. Forgive me today if I'm a little bit a little bit more unusual but I genuinely had no sleep at all last night I've been up since half past four when the alarm went off it's now just gone seven in the morning and I just thought you know what I'm still not tired let's go and play with some makeup uh, maybe that will help sufficiently tire me out and I can then catnap on the sofa for a little bit fingers crossed um, but during one of my Painsomnia moments, uh, I stumbled across this company called We Makeup. Um, had a look, thought, yeah, it's, it's not too bad price-wise. Um, obviously, I bought the, the palette and then the nine eyeshadows and a lipstick. And the whole thing came to just under 39 euros only a 10 euro shipping cost which is quite nice when you think that uh, you know some shipping costs can be more than the actual product itself so it came in at about 49 euros which is about 45 quid um, I'd had some commission back from some Gerard Cosmetics sales that people had done, not very much, not 49 quid's worth, I promise you. Um, I think it was about 10 quid's worth of commission that I'd got. And I'd been, I'd actually been really good, I'd not been buying makeup, mainly because nothing was, was calling to me. So I actually had the spare cash to get this. 
obviously it's taken a while to arrive and obviously the other indie ones I'd ordered at separate times. They've all taken different lengths of time to arrive with the Lager Lurgy, etc, etc. Right. Um, like I said, I've got the nine pan palette, which I haven't shown you yet. Um, and I also picked up the lippy. I just wanted to show you how nicely this comes packaged though. On the back, it says, we have been in the cosmetic industry for over 50 years with a clear goal, the best quality at wow prices. Colours, customisation and performance to let you express your true self. Thank you for being part of our We Gang, made in Italy with love. And that's in both Italian and English on the back because my Italian is no bueno. Uh, so it arrives in this very, very pretty um, box here. It had uh, kind of shredded paper at the top to protect it all. Uh, it came with a little wee holographic sticker which I'm like a magpie with anything holographic you know what I'm like a little card that says thank you in many languages uh, and then in here is the palette the lipstick and they actually threw in a freebie which I didn't know was going to be in there which is a sharpener which is always good because I'm always bloody losing my sharpeners. Seriously. I think I've got about 12 of them, but do you think I can find any of them? No. Um, just to show you, when it arrives, the palette is empty. All of your um, shades are packaged in individual slip covers like this. This is self-adhesive. Um, when it's in here the colour faces out this way the number of it is on the back and it also tells you what format it is so for example number 144 was a matte eyeshadow so I can bin that now I've shown you you want to see the palette don't you well, I'm going to keep you waiting because I'm going to show you the lipstick first this is in shade number two and it's very reminiscent of the KKW crystal crystal um, lipstick covers bearing in mind they've been going for 50 years I'm guessing she was influenced by this um, it's very very simple very chic as you would expect from Italians we make up on that side if lipstick on that side, the shade number on the bottom, and then when you bring it up, it has we in different fonts embossed in the bullet all the way around. As you can see, I haven't even swatched this yet, it is perfect. So, obviously, I'm going to be Oh, it smells like, like vanilla sugar icing. Ooh, I just wiped it on the end of my nose. No dear, well done, Edge. So I'm going to be trying this later, obviously. But I know this is what you want to see, and I've been a real cow making you wait this long. Uh, as you know, I'm fond, very fond of you, on this side, with your custom palette on the back. Made in Italy, not tested on animals, which is awesome. Uh, girl powder, love that. And on the back, similar to... Who else is it this way? Might be the lethal one, actually. It has little holes at the back that you can put like a paper clip or a pin through. To push the shades back out again. So, I actually cut out matte duochrome and 3D metal because that's the three different types that I've got. But they're not wanting to stick very well on the sides there. And I wrote the numbers up the top here just so that when I'm um, describing to you which colour I'm using, I can actually 
just let you know what the number is in case you want to order yourself. This is how I have done mine. Top row is all mattes, middle row is duochrome, bottom row is 3D metals. Okay. Now if I hold the mirror at an angle, hopefully you should be able to see the it, it might show the dual chrome up a little bit easier, it might not. I'm not sure that it is, to be honest. But I have done swatches, which I will insert here while I continue to waffle at you. Uh, this is, of course, and will remain a teaching channel. By virtue of that, my films are a little bit longer than most people's because I keep the blending at real-time speed. I don't cut any of it out so that you can see exactly how long it takes to blend an eyeshadow out. I also zoom in really tight to the eyes so that even if you just watch me on a foam screen you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. If you're more experienced and you just want to see how the product performs. There's a speed widget up there somewhere. Feel free to use it. It really doesn't bother me either way. Um, but it's more important for me that people with chronic pain like myself, which is one of the reasons that I don't blend as quickly as most people, and beginners can actually keep up with me. Because that's missing on YouTube in terms of all of the different makeup channels, that and the fact that the majority of them are in their 20s and don't have skin that moves or wrinkles or things. Now, um, during some of my pain somnia moments I also research different techniques um, right back from like the early days of Max Factor all the way through to today. And it was doing that that made me realise that I don't have hooded eyes, I have deep set eyes. Now, a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded eyes because the way that your eyeshadow wears on the eye is very, very similar for both eye types. However, the workarounds are very different. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to insert a clip in just a minute, which will be very up close, I'm going to be right up in your junk, I'm going to be right up close, don't scream. Uh, and I'm going to talk you through how to work out whether you have hooded or deep set eyes and talk you through what the workaround is for each eye shape so that you get the best performance and the best finish and the best look um, with your shadow as possible. Okay. Once the clip is done I will be back to put some of this on here and see just how well it actually performs. So, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer 
across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, okay. Uh, I'm going to start off with the Chic Pro eyeshadow brush by Royal and Langnickel, which is a blending brush but it's oval rather than being round because I'm actually going to start in the crease so I want to have control about how far it blends up the eye. Alrighty then. Let's play with some makeup, shall we? I'm asking you like you've got a choice. I'm playing with makeup. If you want to watch me, you, you just, you, yeah. <coughs> right. Um, I think I'm going to start off with shade 144, which is the matte green. Very, very kick uppy in pan. You see, doesn't worry me, it means you're getting pigment on your brush. I just tap off back into the pan, leave the, the loose pigment there, pick it up when I want to build colour up or move to the second eye. Okay, now always hold the brush right at the very end so you put as little pressure on as possible. Now, I haven't been to a nail salon, these are stick ons, which is why they're not stilettos because I tried stiletto stick ons and <clears throat> that, that's just mm, mm, dangerous, dangerous. So I'm going to start with the Viennese Warps of the Blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a bit of a fleckle when we get there, now a reverse turn to come back out again. The reason I do this rather than the windshield wiper, although I do sometimes include that, but the bulk of the blending is the Viennese Waltz, 
The reason that I do that is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. Okay? But I know 20 year olds who have always been slim and have similar issues. It can just be a genetic issue with your particular eyelid flexibility. So you can see I always start on the outside edge because if it does suddenly plump down too much pigment it's much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way. There's a really nice kind of muted sort of spring, like a spring green but it's a little bit citrusy, not quite a lime, it's not, not brilliant enough for me to be called a lime, although I've been building it up it's, it's starting to resemble lime. Okay, shut your mouth and just keep blending. How's your day been? Good one? Bad one? Mediocre? Or are you at the start of your day watching me while you eat your breakfast and thinking, oh, what is this mad woman wittering on about? To be honest, I don't know what I'm wittering on about half the time, so join the club. I just... Unless I'm doing like one of my photo inspirations where I'm restricted to which colours I can use or I'm recreating a certain look or I'm doing like a, a palette bingo. I don't really sit down with any idea of what I'm actually going to do. I just see what calls me when I um, start putting makeup on, basically. I didn't realise when I bought these that I'd actually bought three of each variety. I just went through and picked out nine colours that I thought would make an interesting palette. I, I honestly didn't realise that I'd done three matte, three duochrome and three um, 3D metal so apparently my logical admin brain was working even when the rest of it was just going oh pretty colours as you can see I'm still in my greens and yeah not quite as not quite as, as gothic-y deep grungy as my uh, lethal palette is but this is the lethal one I ordered in the winter this one I ordered in the spring it does seem to affect my colour choice right that has blended out really nicely as you can see no problem with building it up it hasn't gone patchy or anything which is Awesome. Right, I'm just going to clean the brush off. Um, I use a microfiber cloth because colour switches are far too harsh on your bristles, especially if you have natural hair. This is synthetic, but I much prefer using either a microfiber cloth or washcloth, face cloth, flannel, old towel, even a bit of kitchen roll. Or tissue would be better than a, a colour switch. Right, using the same brush I'm going to go into... Do I want to go into the yellow or do I want to go into the aqua? That's a very good question. And the answer is... I don't know. <laughs> Not very helpful is it? I think I'm going to go into the aqua. Again, the matte is very kick uppy. This is shade 145. Previous one was 144. I can't remember if I told you that or not. I'm just going to start off initially by running this just along the very edge of this first shade. So it's blending it into the green and overlapping it with. first colour we've put down just to get a really seamless blend so you don't really see when one colour stops and the next one starts. Oh, I'm just going to build this colour up a little bit. A 
these are blending very very nicely they're very soft as well um, when I swatched them I thought then wow these are the mats feel like <sighs> I've never felt a mat that has the texture of this before it it's like stroking velvet almost um, there's, 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 there's almost like no friction at all as you run your finger across you know normally you can feel the texture of the shadow and you can almost feel like a little graininess depending on how finely it's milled these must be milled to within an inch of their life because just you, you can hardly feel that you're actually picking up pigment it, it's, it's, uh, uh, until you've felt it yourself it's, it's difficult to describe and clearly no sleep is not helping with my English skills this morning I really like that. I really like that. Right, clean the brush off. I shall continue to use this brush. Shall I go for a, no, I'm going to go for a slightly smaller brush, I think. Uh, let's grab one of these. This is a Voldemorphy M321. And I'm going to go into one of the duochromes, I think. Do I want to go into that one or do I want to go into that one? Right, I'm going to go into shade 403, which, unsurprisingly, for those who know me, is the purple. Now, normally with duochromes, if you blend them with a blending brush rather than packing them on, they will normally behave like a, um, a mat where the majority of the shimmer will buff away, leaving you with base pigment but this is a duochrome so I genuinely have no idea how this is going to perform um, I don't mind putting shimmers in my crease as I think I've proven on many occasions and I'm doing so again this morning this is pretty hello that is pretty I'm just going to go to here and then kind of just whatever's left on the brush kind of drag it across because I don't want it to go too thick and then in the corner there oh that's delightful and I haven't wet the pigment either let's put some of this on the outer corner of my mobile lid Oh, hello. Oh, I shine my tree. That is very pretty. Hmm. I always sit back and look at my eyes with my brows relaxed when I'm doing this because your eyes are not symmetrical and unless you're someone like Jimmy Chuck who photoshops your results and puts pictures up you're never going to get your eyeshadow exactly the same so I like to just check that the shapes you, you sometimes have to do a slightly different shape on one eye to get the overall effect to look the same when your eyes are Seen side by side. I 
I was expecting to see a lot more fallout with this. Normally when you blend um, a shimmer, you will get more of a... I do have to stretch this out slightly because of the issue that I have with the super deep creasing, but I'll talk you through that bit when I pop the colour on the lid. Just need to make sure it's not building up in the crease there. Yeah, sometimes you have to do a slightly different shape each side to get it to look the same when your eyes are open. And I always advise you, I mean, I've closed this side so you can see what I'm doing easier. Um, but I always advise you, until you're used to your eye shape and you're used to placing shadows on it, it's always a good idea to do at least one eye open so that you can be sure that when, you know, where you're laying the pigment down is actually where you want it to be when your eyes are open. So obviously if you've moved your crease line up, this is the point that you would now follow your new crease rather than your actual crease because a deeper colour recedes backwards and lighter colours come forwards. So by putting a deeper colour through the crease or along our faux crease, it uh, gives the illusion of that part of the eye receding back. Right, um, let's grab one of these ones I think. Right, this is, it's like a pencil brush but it's bigger. Hold it against my hair, you can see better because bristles are about my skin colour on that one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some of the, one of the 3D uh, metal pigments on this brush. I'm going to wet it with this Revolution Cucumber Fixing Spray and then apply it to the rest of the lid here. Now, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, you will kill it. So I think I'm going to go into shade 307, which I've chosen the wrong brush to do this with because the pigment is exactly the same colour as the tip of the brush. Well done. This is starting to go a little bit hard pan already, but I don't mind hard pan if it still picks up pigment. So let's see just how well that has picked up. It's difficult to see, even I can't tell. I'm just drying the ferrule off by spinning it in my knuckles there, because otherwise if you let moisture get down here, it loosens the glue, your bristles fall out, and then you don't have a brush, you've got a stick. I'm just going to apply this. You can use a glitter glue if you prefer, or apply it with your finger. But because I normally have, I'm just going to dry that brush off and go back into the pigment, pick some more up. Because I normally have um, quite pointy nails. I don't like putting my finger in my eye and applying pigment. I also think it's less easy to control where it, where you're putting it. Okay, so although it's hard panning, you can actually pick the pigment up. Although this 3D metal is not as easy to apply as the duochrome was, but that could be the brush, so I might try a different brush for the other side and just see. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles there just to blend those two colours together. Let's clean this brush off and try a different one for the other eye. It also means I'll be able to see when I've applied pigment to it. Let's grab one of my Jeffrey Voldemorphies. This is a lip brush, JS24, but again, it's got that nice point for getting down into 
corner of the eye there and I'm rubbing the brush over the area that's gone hard pan and as you can see it does still pick the pigment up. Now with this eye because I have such super deep creasing from where it's pulled around when I was a kid and I, when I say a kid I mean five years old what I have to do, I have to straighten this creasing out because otherwise the pigment builds up in there loosely and then as it dries it cascades into my eye and down my face through the day. So the way to do it without causing further damage, I measure with my nail how wide the creasing is and then do the same width again, then put my finger on and just stretch the lid far enough straighten the crease out so I'm not pulling it out to my ear hole and I'm just going to apply the pigment blend it onto the lid to make sure it's not building up in there and then gently let go and then continue to apply yeah see right off and go back in again. Normally when I pick up pigment like this to do my eye, my, my mobile lid, normally one dip with brush will cover the two thirds of the lid. I'm actually having to dip back in again to do the second half of the lid. So I think that's a, a texture issue with the actual pigment itself. I think it must be pressed harder. So I'm just going to again buff it there. Just see if I can build up over this side a little bit more with this brush. There's a reasonable amount of fallout from the mats and this duochrome about this 3D metal one seems to be not so I've got things falling on me at the moment right uh, that is the top lid done I'm going to pause you while I go off and put some foundation and bits and bobs on and I will be back to finish off the remainder of this eye look with you. Now I'm going to have to wait until the next time I press record in order to speak to you but for you my darlings it's going to be absolutely blooming instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey my lovelies I am back. Right. Now, brows, I've done my usual. I use the Revolution Soap Brow Kit to fluff them up. And then I have used this brow bra and the 3D Metal Shade 310 to colour them in. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because I used to use pomades, coloured pomades that Revolution had got, but so many people were saying to me, Revolution has stopped doing them, we can't get them, um, how can we do colourful brows, so I had to try and find another way for you that would work. Um, I use the soap dry, I don't wet it, which means that when you, you don't need to use the, the, the brow kit if you don't want to, I just happen to really like the shape of the brush that's in there, uh, it's like a little mini toothbrush shape. Um, you can just use a spoolie and a bar of soap basically and you just leaving the soap dry brush it through your brows so it's then slightly tacky while it's still tacky you then apply the powder over the top this gives the powder something to stick to and the powder then sets the soap so it, it kind of it works okay it works. Right, going in with my flat top brush, I'm going to the same shade that I use for the brows, which is 310 in the 3D metal shades. 
and I'm just going to run this along the lower lash line. Now I can't really put anything in my waterline or tight line because I've always had super watery eyes anyway. Add to that the fact that one of my fibro symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that hay fever. If I put anything on the waterline, it's Niagara Falls. I mean, sometimes even doing this, if I get a bit of powder fluff up into my eye, it can set things off. Um, but by doing this, at least, I feel like I'm finishing the eye look off, you know. I don't feel like I'm... I don't feel like I've finished the look properly until I've put something on the lower lash line. Um, even if it's just a bit of my bronzer that I run along under there. Right, now you need a smudger brush or a dense blender. I like this one, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat top like the last one, but chunky. And I'm going to dip into the uh, shade 145, the Aqua Matte, which was the second colour that I used up the top here. I'm just going to use that to very gently buff the lower lash line. Just to soften it and smudge it down a bit, make it a little bit more grungy, a little bit more. Of course the benefit of doing this as well, if you're like me where you, you tend to get a crease right up close to um, your under eye there, and you find that no matter how well you set your concealer and stuff, it still creases. If you carry the colour, providing it's not like halfway down, if you carry the colour down to that point, it tends to hide the fact you've got a crease there because people think it's just the colour finishing. See, I'm giving you all my tips and tricks now. See how good I am to you? So nice. Nice. Right, I'm going to grab my Jeffrey Sarcophagus um, highlight, which is a peachy champagne, and I'm going to pop some of this under the tail of my brow. I like this Sarcophagus, it was originally in the 24 Carat palette of his, which was aimed at deeper skin tones, um, but I got it because I used some of the colours as blush toppers and inner corner stuff, um, and Sarcophagus actually works on all skin tones, as far. although I've not tried it on super super deep skin yet, but it's worked on every skin tone that I've tried so far, and then inner corner, and I like to bring it down and just blend it in. with the colours that I've run under the eye. Like that. Lovely, tell me, mother. Right. I'm going to pause you for a one last time. I'm going to rub some more of this uh, highlight on my face, put some mascara on, put some of that lipstick on, and I'll be back with my final first impression thoughts. Again, for you instant. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back as you can see. This is what I love about sarcophagus, look at that. Glowing so bright the gods can't see what I'm up to. Right, uh, the mascara that I use with my little mini superhero IT Cosmetics mascara. Some, uh, you know, sort of mini size sample that I'd got from an order that I made with Beautylish. Uh, Lippy is of course the Wee Makeup in shade 02. This, you know normally when you first get a lipstick you sort of you run it across your bottom lip a couple of times to kind of break the, the waxy top. This didn't have a waxy top, this is the softest. I would not leave this in my car on even a slightly warm day, let alone a hot one. This is so soft, so creamy. It's the creamiest lipstick. It feels more 
more like a lip balm than a lipstick. It's so soft and creamy and comfortable. And tastes like vanilla as well. Right, so what are my thoughts on these? Lipstick at the moment, definite thumbs up. Let you know what it's like when it wears. You know, whether you get that butthole lip thing going on and if you do when you reapply you get that gunky stuff in the corner mm -hmm. I'll, I'll update you I'll let you know palette obviously I've used these two shades this one and these two uh, the mattes and the duochrome no problem with at all. Blended like a charm. The 3D metals, not an issue with them, but they are more firmly packed. They do go to hard pan, but it's the kind of hard pan that you can still pick pigment up. But it does mean, whereas before, as I said, I, I would dip in once and do the two thirds of a mobile lid, I had to dip in twice with this. Really not an issue. Um, just means you dip back into the palette a second time. It's it's not rocket science. Um, obviously, I will let you know how this wears through the day, um, and etc. etc. But so far, I am really liking both of these. This colour lipstick is just it's my lips, but better, isn't it? Again, it's like. I've gone from being the girl who did barely anything on her eyes apart from black eyeliner and mascara and maybe a bit of white shimmer on the lid but having bright red lips or bright purple lips or bright blue lips or bright, bright green lips or black lips to being my lips but better and doing wild things on the eyes instead. So does this mean I'm growing up or does it mean I'm rescinding backwards? I'm not quite sure. Either way, I'm having fun with makeup, which is the most important thing. So, I hope you found this helpful. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people. They are still leaving them in your news feed and suggested videos, though, so that it's not obvious that you've been unsubbed. Um, so... Please double check that, double check your notifications as well because um, a collab that I've got coming up a couple of weeks time, the person that I'm collabing with, I had been unsubscribed from their channel and the bell had been unrung and I hadn't realised because I was still watching his films because they were still in my newsfeed. So please double check that. Uh, what do you think of this look? What do you think of the palette choice? I said it isn't that grungy, but it kind of is really, isn't it? It's... <laughs> what do you think? What colours would you have chosen if you were doing a palette? And if this was a palette that was for sale... Which colours are you drawn to? Which colours would you use to create a look with? Or do you look at it and go, No, I haven't got a scooby love. Let me know. I'd really be interested to find out. Uh, if you are new here, Hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm normally a little bit less sleepy than I am right now. Uh, but as I said at the start, no sleep at all. So the fact that I'm still actually lucid at this time of the morning is a miracle to be quite fair. If you've made it this far though I'm guessing that there was something about this film that you've enjoyed even if it is just listening to me waffle. That being the case it would be lovely to welcome you to the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube and that's super easy to do. You hit the red button, can't miss it, it's bright red, it says subscribe. 
Once you click it, it turns grey. The little bell comes up. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. Mm -hmm. And choose all notifications and keep saying yes and all notifications until YouTube stop giving you another option to say so. Don't know how many times they're currently asking. I think it was about four times they asked me last night. Uh, and uh, then you've got an awful lot of other films of mine that you can actually watch. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on. There's product reviews, there's tutorials, there's collabs, there's challenges, there's tag videos. I even read you my favourite poem. So I'm pretty sure you'll find something to interest you. That being the case, as I have said now for some considerable time, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge, my darlings. Right, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.